Greetings, pen pals. I have a pen today that is not new. I have done this pen on several videos before, but not, not, not this exact model because this is in a new color and finish, uh, at least new to me. I think it's been on the market for a little while. So, of course, this is a Pen BBS 456, which is one of my absolute favorite pen. It's their vac vacuum filling pen. We'll go into details about the filling mechanism in a moment. But the thing I really like about this particular one is the combination of this clear demonstrator with this really cool ivory finish which has this grain in it which i think just looks really good sort of like a simulated ivory grain or wood grain um and so it's really really nice what they did so the barrel itself is clear but mostly everything else or really everything else of uh, the um the vacuum filler turning knob the section and the cap is this really nice ivory uh, finish so uh, really really nice nice um, uh, job they did uh, here on the uh, pen BBS 456 now in terms of size you know this is just a, a very conventionally sized pen here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan so you can see it's just a tiny bit bigger than these guys so this is a really really nice pen I f again if you want to know even more details about this pen check out a bunch of uh, videos that I've done I've done a couple of different videos different color schemes on this on this guy but um, um, this is just a really really nice one this might be one of my favorite colorways that they actually offer the 456 because I really think this is just I just really like this uh, this combination here and I'm kind of a sucker for the fake uh, wood grain so um, again really really uh, nice nice uh, pen um, in terms of the details uh, on the cap band it says 456 pen BBS and Shanghai like they all do it has the classic pen BBS sword style clip which is both uh, stylish and very 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 functional um, the cap finial and the distal end, uh, although not um, uh, uh, identical, do complement each other stylistically, and uh, it is pretty nice. Um, uh, the pen actually does post and post quite nicely, which is somewhat unusual for a lot of vacuum fillers these days, especially look at like Twisby's, like for example, Twisby VAC 700R does not post, etc. So this one actually pleasantly uh, posts and does post post quite, uh, quite well. Um, and uh, the section, like I said, is a really nice hourglass style section with a little flare at the end. The nib is uh, your standard Pen BBS fine nib. It says Pen BBS since 2005 uh, and an F for fine. And then it says China. And this is when one happens to be in two tone. And it does, of course, have the standard Pen BBS feed with the extremely fine and somewhat fragile um, uh, fins. Um, in terms of feeds and parts and stuff like that so i'm going to go through in detail how to disassemble this pen but one thing if you're into these pen bbs pens at all uh one thing you might want to invest in and it's really not much of an investment it only costs a few dollars is this pen bbs parts pack this has literally every replacement part you could possibly want with the exception of a nib so it doesn't have any nibs but it's got uh nib holders it's got uh, feeds. It's got every conceivable kind of gasket for this pen and other pen BBS pens as well. It even has converters, replacement converters for the pen BBS cartridge converter type pen. So if you're really at all a fan of pen BBS pens, um, this parts pack that they sell is really, really uh, quite a good purchase uh, and, and, and will really, um, I think, uh, please you uh, for the years to come. So in terms of disassembly for the pen, let's talk about how that would work so firstly the important thing to understand is that the nib unit does come out and you could make your own nib units get another number six nib someplace else take the parts from the parts packets everything you need to make these nib units when you take it out just be cautioned there are two o-rings there's a o-ring on this end and an o-ring on this end so make sure these don't shift around too much and do not lose them and like i said the feed itself is quite delicate so just be a little careful when you when you unscrew that so that's the nib holder that comes out and you can of course pull the nib and feed completely out we're not going to do that today but that does come out the section of course unscrews completely which is uh, pretty nice and there is another o-ring again these are clear o-rings so a little hard to see sometimes but there is another o-ring right there again be careful don't lose it and don't have it become uh, dislodged at all so now comes to the vacuum filling mechanism and you unscrew 
the um, the uh, the filler knob, pull it out, and you'll see this threaded piece of metal has two flat sides, one on either end, which you can grab onto. Now, the real question is, what do you grab onto it with? A Twisby wrench would be a nice idea, except it's not the right size. Um, I strongly recommend you don't put any metal tool on there. This metal is actually somewhat soft and can mar quite easily. I'm a big fan of these nylon jawed pliers. They're easy to get. And again, if you're a fountain pen fan, um, this is probably something you want to have in your toolbox. Um, I would just put the nylon jawed pliers, hold it on those flat sides, and just simply turn. And that will essentially loosen that up. And then you can remove it uh, with your hands. And then the filling mechanism comes right out. And you're left with just a straight barrel, so this can be cleaned, etc. Again, from a O-ring perspective, there's two O-rings here. These seals, both the top seal and the bottom seal, again, replacements for these are available in the parts pack as um, as well. Packed in here are rubber washers and uh, felt washers. Um, in order to remove those, you need to remove this. Uh, end off of the rod. Um, we'll maybe in a subsequent video talk about how to do that, but it basically involves grabbing that metal piece inside there in the little slot and unscrewing it. It's not that big a deal, but it's a really fairly uh, uncommon uh, repair. What I've shown you here will pretty much get you uh, as far as you really need to go in most cases with uh, with the Pen BBS 456. What we are going to do though is put some silicone grease. Uh, uh, on uh, the uh, threads before we disassemble it. So we're going to take a couple of key components and put uh, some silicone grease on it. So let's talk about where the silicone grease should go and where it should not go. So one place it should go is wherever you kind of have to make a seal. So we definitely want to put some silicone grease on the uh, uh, vacuum uh, uh, seal at the end. We want to basically put some on the rod as well because we want to make sure that that rod can move uh, freely up and down. We definitely want to put some on these threads here, uh, both ends um, of, of this metal uh, unit. So that's, that's one place it should go. Another place it can and should uh, go with the silicone grease would be uh, on the threads of the section. And yet again, another place you could put it, but be very careful here, on the nib unit, th nibs and feeds and silicone grease do not mix well. So you can put a little bit of silicone grease here, and I do mean a little because there is an O-ring and some threads there, but be very careful you don't get it and foul the intake on the end of the feed, and you certainly don't want to get it on the fins or on the nib itself. That would not be great because, like I said, nibs and feeds and silicone grease do not behave very well together. So now that we've um, taken all that apart, we can put it all back together again. And again, not terribly complicated. Put our filling unit back in, screw it in. Finger tight is okay if you want to, again, use your... Uh, nylon jawed pliers and just give it a little bit extra but not much you can do that as well and you see that that moves quite nicely uh, through the barrel um, we can then replace our nib unit inside our section and again don't over tighten that and make sure you don't get the nib and feed all discombobulated and out of whack with each other when you do that as well. And then we can simply thread our section back into the barrel of the pen. And after we wipe this off a little bit, we have a completely disassembled, lubed up, and reassembled uh, pen. So now becomes the question, uh, how do we fill this guy? So this is a vac filler. We've talked about this before, how to fill it, but we'll do it again. Uh, the ink uh, I'm going to use is uh, um, Birmingham's Allegheny River Twilight, and I'm going to show you how to fill that up right now. So you're going to uncap your pen. We'll set the cap aside. You're going to unscrew the knob at the end and pull that vacuum unit out. You're going to pull that vacuum unit out before 
you immerse it in the ink. This is not a draw filler of any kind. So it, it works by with vacuum pressure. So you want that to be out before you put it in. Now ideally you want to do it straight down. I'm doing it a bit of an angle here for the benefit of the camera, but you want to immerse the, um, the uh, nib up to the end uh, where the feed meets the uh, section. And then you want to push it down and you want to push it down slowly. What's going to happen here is it's going to build up vacuum pressure. And when the uh, piston gets to the end of its travel, the vacuum pressure will be released and ink will rush into the pen. As you can see, it did right here. Now that's a pretty good fill. It's about halfway. That's pretty much good for most people's purposes. But I'm going to show you a technique, which I have demonstrated several times before. But since this is a clear pen, it'll demonstrate particularly well uh, on this one. Um, and we're going to show you how to get pretty much a hundred percent fill. So what you want to do is again, pull the vacuum filling unit all the way to the bottom. You now have a column of air sitting on top of the ink. Our goal here is going to be, we're going to push this up until that column of air is expelled and all that's left inside the barrel of the pen and inside the section is just ink. So we're going to push that up and we can see that we're expelling the air and we can watch the nib get a good idea when we start to see ink just bubbling up from the top there we know we can stop. So again we want to then hold the piston in this position. We want to invert it over the ink. We want to put it back in and then we want to push it down the rest of the way. And if we did that correctly, which I believe uh, I did, what you should have is pretty much a hundred percent full pen, which is what we have pretty much right here. It's mo I would say that's about a 90% full fill, 95% fill, which is pretty, pretty darn good. But of course, pens were meant to write and you want to see this pen write. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing he with here today is a pen BBS number 456. So this is a vac filler. And this uh, has a number six steel nib in fine. And these pen BBS nibs are very, very consistent. So this writes pretty much like all the fine nibs from pen BBS uh, have. They, some people refer to this one as sort of a mini food aid because the tip of the nib is upturned a bit. But it does have a really, really nice flow. Uh, it is smooth. I would say it's about average uh, wetness. Writes, writes quite, quite, quite nice. Um, and I like it quite a bit. Uh, speaking of liking it quite a bit, one thing I would really like quite a bit is if you kind folks could all please like, comment, share, and subscribe those things would all be very much appreciated by me. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it for this pen, Pen VBS 456. Like I said, great pen, nice pen, vac filling pen. Really like it quite a bit. Um, and um, uh, we saw how easy it is to take apart and maintain it as well. So they've done a great job with these Pen BBS 456s. This one in particular, I'm really just a big fan of because I love the combination of the transparent demonstrator with the uh, ivory finish. Um, really, really nice job. Great job as usual from Pen BBS. So let's uh, talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? All right, like we said, this ink is Birmingham Allegheny River Twilight. So this is a purple, but it's not, it's not really obviously a true purple. I mean, this is what a true purple Waterman Tender purple looks like. So this is not really a purple purple. This is more like an eggplant or 
Uh, very much reminiscent of J. Herban Larm's De Cassis. I think it's uh, quite similar to that. Um, Colorverse Pillars of Creation. Uh, if you forget about the sheening aspect of it, it's uh, the, the base purple color is actually quite uh, quite similar. As well as, say, Pen BBS Mulberry is actually uh, a very similar uh, ink as uh, well. So, like I said, um, um, uh, Birmingham Allegheny River Twilight. Very, very nice ink from uh, Birmingham. Um, the Birmingham uh, Pen Company is based in Pittsburgh, so all their inks are named after things having to do with Pittsburgh and the Allegheny River, uh, along with the Ohio River and, and the Monongahela River, uh, go through the city of uh, Pittsburgh. Um, so, that is Birmingham Allegheny River Twilight. Nice, nice ink. Well, um, I think that will just about do it for this episode. I certainly hope you enjoyed it because I certainly enjoyed making it for you folks. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>